over time, like in the early days, maybe you were the one dealing with a lot of these things and you had to learn to like insulate yourself a little bit more so you could be fully available and present for being the leader and being on stage and the, delivering the word and things like that. Was that an easy lesson for you or did you have to learn the hard way? You learn, you know, the first three, four, five years, you learn to develop a thick skin mm -hmm. and transcend a lot of that. And you really learn to take nothing personal mm. after a while because you, you start to realize that people are like projecting their unhealed areas onto you. They're projecting their unhealed areas and they're projecting their own inert or undeveloped powers on you. You know, so that you're, you're the screen for, oh, he's magnificent because they're not only their own magnificence or he's this and he's that. So after a while, you don't take any of that personal. Like I, I said in the book, Spiritual Liberation, you're able to transcend the two imposters, criticism and praise. You don't run from criticism and you don't run to praise. You're not there for, it's just a part of life. You know, your, your connection is to the presence. Make, to staying true to your mission. And when criticism or stuff comes up, you use it to go within to see where you need to shift your own perception, where you need to heal, where you need to shift. You don't put it back onto, the, onto anyone else. You say, hmm, let me look at that, you know. Um, and so I think that when you are a leader like that, you get the first fruits of the teaching and you also get the first fruits of the growing edge. You know, so you're like, Growing in the public's eye, whereas other professions, and, you know, the plum plumber is not growing in the public's eye necessarily. You know what I mean? He may be growing through whatever, but you're not knowing he's coming to fix your, fix your pipes. You know what I'm saying? Other people may not have that where they're in the public's eye and growing at the same time. But when you are a spiritual teacher or leader or somebody is public, you're actually in the public's eye and growing at the same time. So you have to learn very quickly not to take, take things personally, how to discern what's yours and what's not yours, to deal with what's yours and not take on what's not yours. You know, all of that becomes a part of your, your spiritual practice. Yeah. Do you have a strangest moment on stage story in, in these three decades of being up there three times a day on Sundays? I was speaking on a Wednesday night service and it was a deep moment of coherence. And as I was um, moved into prayer, it was a very transcendent moment. This is guy in the back of the sanctuary starts screaming, you're a black man, you're a black man, like that. I mean, I didn't know what this was, but he was at the top of his lungs. And then Kathy Mack was there. She had red hair. She says, Kathy Mack has red hair. Kathy Mack has red hair. So we don't know whether this man's on drugs. We don't know what's going on. So he starts to run to the front of the, where we are. And so some of the security is a little like, what's going on, what's going on? So he stops, he has a cane, he was blind and suddenly got his sight back. And, he, and that's when he started screaming out, you're a black man. Matthew Mack has red hair, he had never seen us. Wow. So he had never, he never even thought about whether I was black, white, green, red, whatever. He had never seen Kathy Mack. And I said, what are you saying? He said, I was blind. I've been blind. Here's my cane. I've been blind for years. I sit in the back. And when you started praying, my sight came back. And I didn't, you're a black man. He said, I'm not a racist. Well, I just, I just, I just <laughs> you know. <laughs> I always remember that was a very, that was very funny, you know. Wow. If you like that video, you're going to love the next one. Click this thumbnail right here and I'll see you over there.